Hey everyone, I thought I would make a video and weigh in on just some thoughts I've had on Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And honestly, I'm questioning myself as to why I even have an opinion about this other than being a survivor. I have to weigh in. I have to. Okay, so I can I can kind of uh, talk about a few things that um, I want to talk about cancel culture and I want to talk about domestic violence and sexual abuse and the trial and the judge putting a time limit on the testimony. It's just so very bizarre to have an opinion about this, even though I've been out here for 13 years having an opinion about everything in the media that is misrepresented, over-sensationalized, um, and very much talking about mental health disorders, labels, where we try to put people in boxes, and often those lines are blurred and you can't fit a person into a box. And the way the media depicts things is never the way it is. It's over sensationalized, it's slanted, it's biased, it's it has an agenda, and um, it's going to use what sells. And so I've often talked about multiple personality, disassociative identity disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, sexual abuse, survivor, recovery, um, complex post-traumatic stress. Bipolar, I've talked about all of it out here, and um, over the years I've been very, very um, blessed that people have hung in with me when I've taken breaks, and I think like 13 years ago I was doing two videos a day, or three sometimes, putting a lot of content out, and some, a lot of those videos are just privated now because, you know, life changes, my kids are older, and like I said before, I wanted to, uh, you know, there's a time for sharing and there's a time for uh, closing those videos down. And like I said, if you ever want to hear a whole uh, kit and caboodle of me being diagnosed with multiple personality in 1986 and how the different alter aspect parts, personas, or uh, just how I developed. And um, then uh, became merged and all. Um, you know, uh, just let me know and I can uh, send you unlisted links for some of those videos. Um, what I never dished up out here was a dog and pony show or a circus sideshow or entertainment or um, a kind of monetized channel buy me a cup of coffee, PayPal, um, patron or anything for, um, content. I just felt like in our, um, in doing awareness in our community for multiple personality, just associative identity disorder, that there had been enough of that dragging people out onto talk shows and their doctor and having them perform and all that. So I didn't, I didn't feel like that would be uh, very advantageous to my channel. But then I realized that everyone was doing it. Like that, that, that even though there were only three or four people talking about that, but what I was talking about back then, that all of a sudden everybody was, you know, talking about DID. So I just really started switching up my channel to more mosaic, more um, cooking, knitting, crocheting, talking about spiritual things, um, talking about Hollywood, talking about um, trials that were really important, things that were in the news, and fashion, and sharing cooking and baking and just regular vlogging. Um, so I'm going to weigh in on Johnny and Amber's because I've been writing about it on Facebook. Guys, there's not going to be a winner here. I don't believe there's going to be a winner. 
I believe there will be two people that will hopefully go on feeling that they have been seen and heard and their story has been told and that their truth has been told and they will move on and rehabilitate their life. And maybe, just maybe, uh, the public will have more sympathy for both of them. There will not be one uh, enemy number one wife beater or enemy number two gold digger. Um, there will be uh, damage to both of them still. And I, I hope more than anything that Johnny goes on and uh, does his music because that's his passion. I, I can really feel that is that writing and art and music is his passion. Um, and I think that Amber will continue to get roles and she's a mother now and will want to take time to just be with her uh, little daughter there. And um, what I really hope the jury will do is not um, reward an um, obscene amount of money to either one of them. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to come up with a, I, I think that comes back down to Disney and Warner Brothers and has nothing to do with Amber and Johnny. Um, the jury has to decide, is there defamation in that op-ed? And it looks like Amber ran it through all of her team and people to edit it. Uh, so she didn't kind of write it herself. She didn't entitle it. She didn't. Okay. Did she go after, did she jump into the Me Too movement and Time's Up feet first and be like a poster child? Yeah, she was. So everybody knew she was talking about Johnny. Um. So the fallout of it was people knew who she was talking about. Um, so I think the judge really is going to be giving some really precise directions on what they can consider when considering defamation. Um, but I'm glad that Johnny is coming forward because it does open our eyes to mutual abuse and to men being abused. And when the female is the aggressor or just the antagonizer or just the person that can't let it go. I've talked often out here about um, my own life and growing up with my parents being, uh, having domestic abuse. And um there's always one that just can't put it down. They just can't put down the subject. They just can't, they gotta be the last word in. Uh, you can think an argument is resolved and it will come up in chitter chatter later. It will come out when the person is drinking. Um, the truth does come out. Things that are still on your mind come out. And I think for Johnny, the, the sad thing here is that there's an entire character assassination going on here where they're bringing in his diva drunk behavior or diva uh, behavior uh, as a movie star, uh, which is being late to the set, having to shoot around him, having the crew wait, maybe showing up hungover or drunk um you know this is what hollywood is it's sad to say but this is what hollywood is um that's why they have 50 million people micromanaging them that's why they have 50 million people hiring doctors and nurses for them and housemaids and personal assistants and public image people and people micromanaging them because that's the suits have to take care of their investment. Johnny made tons of money for tons of people, for his agent, for his business manager, for his bodyguards, all the people that took care of him. And Amber did too. Johnny made more. 
Um, Amber's coming into her own now with Aquaman, I guess. But I think they both have an obscene amount of money. And if one of them does, I mean, I know Johnny has lost a lot, a lot. And being blacklisted, being canceled is horrible. So I am totally against cancel culture. I am all for rehabilitating people, um, you know, acknowledging a behavior was wrong. And uh, <laughs> it's so funny, the village people is out in the background. Um, why, why I'm seeing I'm saying people need to rehabilitate when they do something wrong. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, the village people are singing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so um, <laughs> I digress. Um, there, there's always, uh, you know, Johnny was going through withdrawal. He was go working on his sobriety. That comes with a lot of chaotic behavior. Comes with a lot of emotional stuff. His mother was dying. All of those memories were coming up. He was navigating a battlefield in his mind. And leaving a relationship he had been in forever. And mother of his children and his children too. At a impressionable age. And embarking on a relationship with Amber. And I think it all just escalated his drinking and then pain and medicating um, uh, emotional pain and physical pain. Um, and I think there will be things he probably can't remember, but I do not believe some of the stuff that Amber is saying, and she has made more of it than it is. And I think you're just as guilty as lying when you make more of it and you make it, uh, I will never believe the bottle scene. I'm not going to talk about it because I know too many people will get triggered. What I will say is that what she is describing would have, um, Required some kind of medical attention. She wouldn't have been able to just be walking around so well. Everything's just not let no. No. Um, it, it, and, and Camille Vasquez, uh, her lawyer said it better. We'll get to the sequence. Um, because Johnny was purportedly, he had just had his finger chopped off. He was going into shock. He was supposedly on five MMDAs, but ecstasy, five. I don't know how they knew that number, but five. And um, inebriated with weed and alcohol. Had been on a bender and finger chopped off and was able to hold Amber down and do that. And not like, I mean, it, she said there was bleeding and lacerations and swelling and, um, and that he punched her head repeatedly proactively. So she reacted. He, you know, there's so many, there's so many weird details to it that don't make any sense. Um, I mean, she added in that she has shingles, sort of like her bee, her, her dog stepped on a bee kind of thing, just out of nowhere. And I have shingles and I have a, okay, I have shingles and I got it when I was young too. And if you have autoimmune illnesses, um, lupus, any of those things, you can, you can have shingles. So, um, she's also said she has skin condition. There are skin conditions that are called, um, discoid lupus that come with something called Raynaud's syndrome, where your skin flares up when you're in the sun and you get like a butterfly rash around the bridge of your nose. 
and around your face. Some people call it the moth rash, the wolf rash. It's a discoid rash where you get discoloration around your eyes, forehead, your usually a bridge of your nose around here. And it can look like a butterfly. Um, but it can look like bruising because uh, the, uh, I don't know if they're called venules or the veins or the, the vascular veins in your skin. Usually fair skin people will um, um, pop a little bit so you can see the veins. So it looks kind of ashen and blue. Um, also, she mentioned she had shingles. When you have shingles, you can get cold sores. I get them often, usually one right here. Um, if you've ever had a cold sore, they're usually on the inside of your lip too, and you end up biting them. So you do look like you have a split lip or like they can break open um, and bleed. What I see on Amber is a cold sore. And I see skin that looks like it's been irritated. And I do see kind of a vascular thing going on, like um, uh, around her face that looks very, very discoid lupus ish. And I also see um, the same kind of bumps you would have with shingles that would uh, blister on her forehead. And so, um, also when you have discoid, uh, if, when you have a skin condition where you can't be in the sun, um, your hair can fall out in chunks. So, you know, there's just so many variables. It's hard to say it's all Johnny. And I can't say that. If I was on the jury right now, I would say I believe that she kept it going, that she antagonized, that she made more of it than it is. She made it uglier than it is. And, um, yeah, I mean, I would have been out of there long before that, but he even stayed after the finger got cut off and all that. And it, and then the poop. So I've been really thinking about this. I'm like, my God, these two, they really kept trying. They tried everything and they were mutually not good for each other. They weren't good. They were toxic. That's exactly what they were. And if I'm on that jury, that's what I'm thinking through all of this. I'm thinking, man, I'm listening to the recordings where they're like going back and forth like little children over, was that a punch? Was that a slap? Who started it first? What, that, 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 back and forth. You kind of want to just smack them both. Go to your corner, you go to your corner and stay away from each other. And Johnny tried to do that. He went in different rooms. He tried to leave. Um, I think that everyone should have their moment to tell their truth. And that a lot of men have been canceled that did not do what women are saying they did. I feel like we're back in the panic days of the 80s where... Children went to daycares and churches and came back and said satanic worship was happening with them. Everybody was. Teachers were doing it. Daycares were doing it. Everybody was being ritualistically abused. Trigger warning, trigger warning. I, I know there's real people where that happened to them. So it, it it's like a huge slap in the face to have somebody jump into a movement and become an ambassador and to, Get so much FaceTime, it really hurts uh, for folks that really went through um, and never even made it to court, never even got listened to past due. Past, really? Is that what happened? I mean, it's, it's just, I think what I'm seeing more and more is the 
obscene amount of entitlement and privilege that Hollywood gives so many people and that we worship for what? For what? Um, and how easily they're discarded, that they're given everything to self-destruct. They're given enough money to self-destruct. $500 bottles of wine? Magic mushrooms, ecstasy, cocaine, drink. Any country they wanted to go be in, islands, jets, planes, helicopters, private penthouses, floors of penthouses. It's an obscene amount of money. Do they work hard for it? Yes. Yes, they work hard for it. They give up their life for it. It is truly a sacrifice. And I think that's what I'm seeing more and more in the trial is that people that are in Hollywood entertaining us are property. They are owned by their company, the production. They're in and back. They're just, and they're easily discarded. They're put out to pasture and humiliated. And, uh, that's the saddest thing is, uh, yeah. So that's what I see. I, I do notice over and over again, though, in all of the recordings that they've been playing the past few days that um, Johnny has said over and over again, I laid it all down. I laid it all out. I, I left it all. You left nothing. And I think in that moment, he's really telling Amber, I left a woman that could have been my wife, the mother of my children. I left everything. You left nothing. And look at everything you gained. Kind of thing. Um, so I think he really was navigating some real regret, realizing maybe Vanessa was the woman of his life. And dealing with emotions of her getting married and it not working out with Amber so much. Um, and so many grifters, just freeloaders, just Amber's friends and just, just, Oh, here I have a penthouse, you know, I mean, go stay for rent free, um, freeloaders and, uh, people that just wanted to get close to, celebrity and that lifestyle for their tickles and I didn't get that ain't okay um so I really hear him saying that the other thing I hear Amber saying is I just kept thinking Johnny's gonna kill me and he, he's not gonna remember he did this. it works to her advantage every time she said that to the jury. Now what they're trying to really hone in is Johnny was drunk all the time. Johnny didn't remember. Johnny was drinking. Johnny was on drugs. Johnny had black dogs. Johnny was hungover. So here's what I wonder. Why are they staying so long on Johnny had a drinking problem. Johnny had a drug problem. Johnny got nasty too when I drank. He was, he was a sloppy drunk or a loud drunk or an obnoxious drunk. But why, why, when Johnny got on the stand and said, I was a drunk, I was, I was a drug addict. I, I said foul things. I was vulgar. I was inappropriate. And I am ashamed of that. And I was wrong. What more do they want? That is not what Johnny is on trial for, right? It's for domestic violence and leaving all of those marks on Amber. And now her coming up with sexual abuse involving a bottle. So it's all just building and building and building. 
And what I don't get, I really don't get, I'm going to do some research on it, ask some lawyers. I know judges can stop. And they can say the trial is going to go till, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, get all your evidence in or whatever, present a case. But what I hear this judge saying is, I'm reminding you again, you have this many hours and you have this many hours left for the rebuttal for witnesses and I will shut it down. Even if you have a witness on the stand, I will shut it down. I don't think that's possible because that's like being in overtime in the football game and saying, okay, we're going to call it because you're in overtime. Um, It's confusing to me how that wouldn't cause somebody to be able to say, well, wait a minute, I had, I, I had one more question for my witness and I couldn't get it in and that could wreck the whole trial. What? So, um, yeah, I'm a little confused about that. Um, if anybody knows the answer, let me know. Um, and then there's the whole thing again that I said about, um, Memorial Day weekend is the 20th, it's the 31st, but people usually leave on the 27th. The judge is saying it'll go till the 27th and then be over with by Memorial Day. Memorial Day is the 31st. So is she saying I'm giving them till the 31st till to deliberate? Is she timing how long they can deliberate also? Like, here's how much time Johnny's team has left. Here's how much time Amber's team left. Get your people up here. Get your witnesses, your evidence in, make your rebuttal, your closing arguments, and then I want it over with by uh, Memorial Day. So are they going to be deliberating over Memorial Day or their long weekend? Or, yeah, it's kind of confusing to me, that part. And I, you can time it, but you can't shut down testimony in the middle of testimony. So um, the whole thing is just rather sad. Um, so that's all I really wanted to say. I wanted to weigh in on it because we're at the halfway mark or getting towards the fourth quarter, I guess. Right? <laughs> fourth quarter next week. Um, and I think it is a real uh, watershed moment among many, that this Me Too movement needs and Time's Up movement needs. Uh, people cannot jump in feet first and use a campaign or a movement uh, for their own uh, agenda. Um, it just hurts everybody. And uh, and I don't believe in cancel culture. I believe in rehabilitating people. And um, that will always be my belief. Um, so I just want to weigh in and talk about it because I've been writing about it on Facebook. And I've been hanging out at Popcorn Planet, which is a great channel. There's a lot of great channels out there that are giving awesome information. I've been watching it on Court TV and Law and Crime Network, which is really good um, online. And then I go for recaps over to Popcorn Planet with Andy Signor, and he has a lot of wonderful guests. He has Ann Silvers, who's a psychologist therapist, who, who has written a book on uh, male abuse, uh, the abuse of males. Um, he has Louise. I can't think of Louise's last name. I can't think of uh, Rudy's, uh, Jody's last name right now. But he has uh, Steph, the alpha, the alter nerd, Steph, the alter nerd, um, on YouTube. She's in the UK and does really awesome um, journalism and stays on cases. Um, and also, 
Kim from It's Kim, and she's been right at the forefront of Free Britney, and she really does great work on getting clips and recaps done for this child, too. Um, uh, he's also had uh, Mr. Christopher Melter on from a very well-known high-profile net, high net profile uh, California lawyer, divorce court lawyer, or kind of the divorce lawyer of celebrities. And uh, he's really been breaking it down and helping us to understand everything, which I'm so grateful for. And just so many people have weighed in. Alexandria, another therapist, um, he's had call-in shows where people can just call in and de-stress after listening to so much triggering stuff where survivors can call in and just talk and support each other. Um, recaps after each little bit, kind of break it down in little chunks so that um, maybe little things that that we missed, um, why they're, why it makes sense to be talking about it or whatever. Um, really, this is one trial he has stayed on from, I can remember like a year and a half, two years ago, he was really talking about it then. Um, so I've been going to Popcorn Planet for, um, and just hanging out there after the, um, uh, I haven't been to Luis's channel yet. I have been to Jody's. Uh, I am with It's Kim and Steph, the alternate. I, I do want to get Ann Silver's book. Um, and I've been to her website. And uh, Alexandria, I've been to her website. So um, all of these people weigh in. They help us break it all down. And um, also... Uh, Amy Goodhart, who lives at the penthouse, uh, no knew Johnny and Amber when they lived there, and all the people that lived in all those penthouses gave a tour of her penthouse um, with Anne Hayes. I mean, just really, everybody's weighing in and bringing really good content so we can understand what's the layout of the penthouse when the police came in, where's the elevator, what floor does it go up to? Where's the pool, the gym, the whatever? And um, that's been so helpful. And she just has a lot of great, uh, she's a designer of, I believe, Hollywood costumes and designer on set. So uh, she's been a joy to watch. Um, and I think that's it. But, uh, oh gosh. I really see how the internet can be really so helpful to get good information out there. I feel bad that the jury isn't going to get to hear the leaked information and stuff that we all are privy to. Um, but I, I wonder about so many things, like if it can't come to a mutual decision, if they come back and say, we think they're both guilty of abusing each other and we don't think either one of them should get any money, then what happens? You know, what happens? Um, I mean, I think that wouldn't happen, but it could. It, it could. Um, after all is said and done, I hope... They just can rehabilitate their whole, their families can move forward and they can do and be healthy. All right. That's all I got. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. And thanks for hanging in with me. If you want, just go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell button and I'll, you'll catch a video and we'll get to know each other. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.